Hello viewers, welcome to this week's edition of X Life with me, Kwame Ousu Dansu. Today we'll be speaking to one fantastic, uh, prolific politician in Ghana. He is a businessman as well as an entrepreneur. And he is a member of parliament as well as one of the five contestants or aspirants of the new patriotic party's uh, flag bearership. He is, coincidentally, we share the, the, the same birthday and, and I'm so pleased to be here to speak to him. He is Honorable Francis Adani. Thank you very much for joining us on next time. Well, thank you very much, Kwame, um, for offering me the opportunity to appear on this program, X Life. Well, this for the first time. But before we delve into the issues, let's go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, I will speak to Adam. I come back from the break. Thank you very much for staying with us. This is X Live with me, Kwame Ousu Danso. And like I indicated before, we went for the break. We're here with one of Ghana's finest politicians and a businessman, uh, Honorable Francis Adainimo. So before the break, uh, we were you know having a little chat. I want to find out, you know, because most of our viewers out there know you as a politician. Aside politics, what do you do? First of all, um, I'm also a professional civil engineer, a member of the Ghana Institution of Engineers, uh, the civil division. So uh, professionally, I practice, uh, or I have practiced my profession before, trained from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Besides the professional expertise, which I have, I also uh, run a small, uh, uh, medium-sized uh, enterprise. And if you say so small, how, how small? Is it's it? an SME, you know, SME. Um, With how many uh, employees? Well, I have about 15 employees that uh, every month uh, I have the obligation to satisfy them in terms of their salaries. Salary. I also have to pay their social security contributions for their future. And of course, I also have to pay corporate tax uh, to government and also to pay uh, taxes on directors and monuments and other things. So this uh, company, I uh, set it up uh, in the year 2001 right. and uh, together with my, my better half. Right. And uh, it's in the construction sector that, that's how we operate. So um, we have been running this business for, for, for all these years. Now, um, with, with the experience we've had, terms of business and in terms of uh, entrepreneurship do you think that you know the system has made it very easy for somebody to set up a company or somebody to set up a business do you think that you know the economic parameters and indicators favor people who want to go into their own businesses and who want to uh, set up their own small medium enterprise well it is not easy it is not easy because there are about three main parameters in my view uh, for any person desiring to set up um, an enterprise in any of the sectors of the economy. And the key thing is the capital that you require for the business setup. And of course, uh, the, the manpower base that you also need for that business setup. And of course, the technical uh, know-how and the market for your products or your services that you need to offer. Right. Very so, well. I'm, I'm sure you were, you were quite long when you started your own business. Uh, I, I don't know if, if that assertion is true. Yes, <laughs> uh, and I've been in this business for the past uh, uh, 13 years or so. So, of course, I was below the year 40. Oh. I was less than 40 <laughs> when I started this. Right. Very well. So, how were you able to make it happen for you, for yourself? You know. Uh, how, how easy or difficult was it for you to get you know, capital to start your own business? And, and because we're trying to inform and educate people out there. We're trying to motivate people uh, who have perhaps you know, completed universities and they don't have anything to do. They want to venture into their own businesses, but they don't know how to go about it. So for you, uh, as an entrepreneur and as a businessman back in the day, how were you able to mobilize capital to be able to set up your own business? <laughs> of course, it wasn't easy. And it, I know it is still not easy to approach anybody that, look, I have this business uh, 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 plan and can you support me to implement my business plan? So when I left the university, um, I worked with the private sector and whilst working with the private sector, I had a desire that I also 
needed to set up my own business and engage Ghanaians and then see the impact that I can also make to society. And so I set it up and uh, I looked at my own uh, professional expertise, the area that technically I was strong so that even if I didn't have the capital to move on with the business, by virtue of my professional expertise, that could be a source of guarantee for anybody to support me. So we started in going into construction and then into construction certainly once uh, people identify you that yeah. you can do, do something. something for them, they give you the contracts and then uh, they will advance you with some mobilization and then if you are careful with your financial management, then you can make progress and make some uh, profit on it. But I didn't have any seed capital. Very well. So we're going for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll be looking at some of the government interventions in terms of policies for the youth and the expertise we have in the country. So we're still we'll be talking to uh, Honorable Francis Adaino. Stick and stay. Well, welcome back, viewers. My name is Kwame Usudanso, and I'm speaking to uh, one one very fine gentleman uh, who has made a mark in terms of politics and in terms of business and entrepreneurship. He is Honorable Francis Adaino. But before the break, we were talking about how difficult it was for you. Uh, as a young man who wanted to veer uh, into his own you know, private business and the fact that you didn't get any seed capital. Now, before the break, I was also talking about how uh, you, know, you think government has fared in terms of policies uh, for the youth uh, in trying to set up their own business. You remember that you know, GDA was introduced. We also uh, have another introduction of, of a youth enterprise support system. And now, recently, we've also been uh, introduced to MRA uh, 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 mentorship. In your estimation, do you think that, you know, co and considering, of course, the fact that um, they've not really fared well and people have attributed it to management failure, do you think that government over the years have been able to be proactive in that regard in trying to ensure that we help the, the young and average Ghanaian develop? Yeah, I, I think that since independence, all governments that we have had have in one way or the other attempted to address the concerns, the needs, the aspirations of the youth. So policies are introduced and then during implementation they are reviewed and all that. But what I know is that there are two main areas that as a country we have tried to use or two main tools to address the aspirations and the needs of the youth. Economic tool and then the educational tool. These are the two main tools that we have been using to address the needs of the, people, of the youth. The question is that, have these tools been effective? Have these tools been uh, sustainable? And I believe that in addressing the aspirations of the youth, we need to look at the moral aspect of it, we need to look at the religious aspect of it. We need to look at the social aspect of okay, it. Can you, can you um, clarify that? Ah, well, we also need to look at the economic aspect of it and, of course, the education, education aspect. aspect of it, of course. In terms of the moral and then the religious, we need to have, since the youth are the future leaders, we need to have well-trained you know, youth for our society who will take up the leadership of this nation. So all interventions should not only be in terms of education and economic tool or technique to address them. And so, um, yes, we have had uh, JIDA, we, have, we now have uh, the YES and other uh, government policy interventions, all aimed at addressing the aspirations and the concerns of the youth. As a young person, what do we want? We want to, be, to have a high quality education, Upon graduation, you want to have a, a good job, either in the formal sector or even if it is in the informal sector. You know, you want to have a job where you are remunerated well and you have a good you know, no living condition for yourself. And then you also have to think about your family, you know, how to uh, get a family and then nurture the family. So that should be a comprehensive or holistic approach to addressing the needs and then the aspirations of the youth. Wow. I, and I, yeah. I will not subscribe to a policy where 
that we are going to uh, create a, uh, an opportunity of uh, employment for our youth just by the distribution of some items or goods. Let's say, um, let me give you, cite you one example. I know there was mass lock yes, where yes. we were distributing uh, what vehicles for taxis and things, whether they were sustainable or not. Because they are all coming from government, then the perception is that once this is coming from government, uh, even if I'm not successful, I will find a way not to fulfill my obligation to the government as far as that kind of uh, facility was extended to me. So um, we also have a program, the National Youth Employment Program, and then now it is JIDA, now Youth Enterprise uh, Support. I believe that these uh, policies, particularly the Youth Enterprise Support, which is I think government says that about 10 million uh, Ghana cities uh, support for it. There's no, as at now, I know that there's no legislation on that. So it is an administrative uh, directive or policy that is being implemented. But we need to look at the sustainability. Do you think that. that the policies are, 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 you know, the recreation of the same policies that have uh, not fared well? You know? Oh, I believe it is just a recreation of, of some policy, previous policies, so that um, we give it a new name, uh, we give it a, what a new office, and then we find new personnel to handle that. My main concern is that it should not be avenue just to provide some goods to the youth uh, to use without the sustainability. Okay. Very well. So hold that thought. Uh, we have our colleague Fusua who is having lunch with one of our entrepreneurs. When we return, uh, we still are going to be speaking to uh, Honorable Francis Abadimo, who is giving us a very important uh, point with regards to employment and regards to policies and directives from government. So stick and stay, we'll be right back. Thank you, Kwame. I invite you also for lunch. You are welcome to your favorite segment on X Live Lunch with our entrepreneurs. This is the only place you find what, where, how, and even why our entrepreneurs and hardworking personalities enjoy their lunch. My name is Fosua and my lovely outfit is Hankesi Afrique Designs, located inside East Legon, right opposite Imano Eye Clinic. Hmm, last week I had a blast on my lunch date and this week guess who I have? He's in the person of Kweku David. He is a radio presenter, yeah, and a photographer and he's up to a whole lot of things we are all yet to find out. Why don't you come with me inside Tavern 2131, located in Osu. Come with me and let's get to know him well as we have our lunch. So welcome Kweku. Thank you. Uh, tell us, who is Kweku? Essentially, I mean, in a, in a concise way, I think that I'm basically a person who loves life. Mm -hmm. um, I, live, I live simply, um, but I do love life. Um, I'm passionate about maybe three, four things in life. Um, passionate about my faith. Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about um, my work. And then I'm also very passionate about the youth you know and in terms of development in terms of you know social mindsets and so on these are my passions yeah they're driving passions yeah you're talking of work what mm. do you do apart from your radio thing today? well apart from being a talk show host myself on radio i before the talk show host i started a business about six years ago uh wow. quick david photography okay. um, you know, we've been around for about six years now, mm -hmm. and um, we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Yeah. Looking at your work schedule, mm. what time do you have your lunch? Um, funny question you ask <laughs> because I'm not a food person. I don't think food. Wow. Um, I eat when I'm hungry. Okay. So I'm ba I basically believe in the principle of eating for sustenance, not for pleasure. Okay. Okay. So. When it comes to food, when I'm hungry, I eat. Are you picky when it comes to food? Or generally, generally talk? no. Generally no. But if I decide that I want to eat for pleasure, mm -hmm. then I can be extremely fussy. 
Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you give me a typical mm -hmm. queer Kudemis food? If I should see this food, I go like, yeah, that's queer Kudemis food. Okay, so typical in terms of I'm going out on a date. Like I met you typical, today. Okay. You're going to. I mean, you're, you're about okay. having your dates, uh, and I okay. grabbed you. Okay, okay, wait, <laughs> hold on. Now, um, if I'm going out, okay. okay, and let's say I'm having a work lunch, okay. and um, hosting a client, mm -hmm. okay, then I'll, you know, go the extra mile. Okay. If I'm eating for me, mm -hmm. I usually stay simple and plain. So I like my ripe plantains, you know, that red red, you know, ripe okay. plantains, it goes with either beans or with incontumbre. And you know, the funny thing is that people argue with me mm -hmm. and say that uh, cocoa and incontumbre don't work. And I say, because you're not a crapim. If you're oh. a crapim, you understand that it's how it goes. That's how you know. You know, so, yeah, I mean, I keep it simple if it's for me. So Anyways, that. cheers. As you're waiting for your food, mm -hmm. I prepared something delicious okay. for you. I did it inside Tavern 2131's kitchen. Hey. And I know you're going to love it. Really? Yeah. So as you're waiting for your food, what do you, how's your regular day like? Regular day? Well, I'm usually up at 4 a.m. Um, I have a, you know, a little quiet time, devotional time. Okay. And then quiet I start, um, yeah, I'd like to think so. Okay, I would like good. to think so. Um, then I get my day started. You know, I would, um, I would start preparing for my show. Of course, usually the night before, before I hit the sack, you know, get into bed, I would, I would have done some preparation anyway for the morning show. So I just get into there. I look at what I need to touch up on. If I need to pull some tracks, whatever, for my show, because I do a mixture of DJing as well as presenting. You know, yeah, I mean, I basically produce, you know, and present my show, you know, so, wow. yeah, I have some, I have a team of guys that help me with that, but basically, it's, it's my brainchild, you know, so, and then, of course, I have a mentor who's always watching, eager-eyed, to make sure that um, I'm pushing myself, you know, yeah. So, your food is coming, mm -hmm. and looking at your tights, regular day. Yeah. I have something special for you, as I said earlier. Okay. It's my healthy jollof rice, okay. as you say in Ghana here. My friend will tell you that that's colored rice. Mm. I say my kitchen is jollof rice with some green leaves and all. But you know where jollof rice comes from, right? I hate Nigeria, is nope. that true? The where? Gambia. Really? Yep. Wow. Okay, this is from my kitchen, so it's from Ghana. <laughs> okay. I want to see you enjoy the food. Okay. So, it's my treat. It's all yours. But you have to dig in first, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. Can I help you out? Thank you. Yep. Viewers, don't be jealous. You're always watching and we're always enjoying, right? <laughs> so, wow, it's been amazing having you, Thank you as a guest. Yep. We can do this. Over and over, right? Well, considering, not, not, consi so considering not the proximity of our offices. <laughs> we can, oh, yeah. all the time. So viewers, it's been great again having Kweku David on our lunch seat. And we are right here inside Tavern 2131, inside Osu. See you here same time next week. Call me over to you. <laughs> Fusha, you are really enjoying yourself. And I, last week, you see, I told you that you should invite me. You didn't invite me. Why? Eh? Fusha, anyway. Uh, but I'm still here because I'm enjoying myself and I'm, you know, I'm really getting a lot of insight uh, into what, you know, uh, the, the issues that matter most in this country. Uh, and, Seth, you remember, uh, you recall that we were talking about the policies and you were making some fine submissions. Going forward, you know, you are in a keenly contested MPP race. Sure. And I must admit that I admire and, and I like the way you've actually looked at the issues. Do you think that you stand a chance of becoming a flabber? Because of course, the only way you'd be able to uh, uh, implement these policies you've spoken about right now is when you're given a nod. Do you think that you, you deserve to be the uh, MPP flabber? Absolutely. It is about leadership. Whatever we're talking about, relating to the youth, relating to the elderly in all the total uh, economic environment of our country is underpinned by having a strong, determined leadership 
that will offer selfless, credible, quality leadership to the good people of Ghana. What is the job of the leader? The leader is supposed to achieve happiness for his followers. And you do so in terms of the Ghanaian contest as a president of the state by utilizing the resources which are vested in you, distributing those resources for the welfare and the betterment of our people. Yes, I stand the chance of winning because there's a saying that when the king was being delivered, the head of the family was there to witness. Nonetheless, nobody could predict that one day David could rise to become the king of Israel. Nobody could predict that one day Barack Obama could rise to become the president of the great, greatest nation on this planet. Nobody could predict that one day in the history of Ghana, Dr. Hila Leman from Golu could rise to become the president of the Republic of Ghana. And therefore, Francis Adenimo finds himself in this contest. Yes, I am the youngest in terms of age in the contest, but I may not be the youngest in terms of leadership. And I am sure that if the delegates of the new patriotic party will assess every one of us Look at our potentials, look at our pedigrees. And I believe that the potentials of Francis Adair as a leader, <laughs> as a leader, will prevail. Very well. Uh, those are some fantastic revelations. I like the, the king bit. The fact, when the king was born, the head of the family was there to witness. I, yeah. I, I very much like that. But, and there is a, yeah. two, two things that I want to mention. Very well. One, competition always makes you stronger and better. And better. It is feared only by a week. Wow. <laughs> Secondly, the future is for those who dare to dream and find the courage to pursue their dreams. Wow. So for the youth, the future is for you. And if you have a dream, find the courage to pursue that dream. Well, it is very, only, very, yeah. sometimes we are constrained because of risk. But it is interesting to note that to take risk and fail is not a failure. Very well. Real failure is to fear taking that any risk. risk. <laughs> well, oh, thank you very, very much, uh, Honorable Francis Adanimo. We are so, so, so grateful uh, yeah. for uh, welcoming us to your home. I I'm sure you've been uh, enlightened wherever you are. Thank you very much, viewers, for staying with us. I am Kwame. Kwame Owusu Danso. See you same time next week on X Life. Ah, bye bye. <laughs>